Hey guys, it's Matt, welcome to Speed Tutor, and today we're going to be looking at Unity's new texturing AI, which is currently in beta, whether we can use the textures that it creates in this realistic Unity scene, and whether you'll be able to use it in your own games too. Uh, do be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 200 different scripts, assets, and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Check out all the sales, savings, and everything you can find in the description, because you can make some massive savings across game dev. So as you can see in here, we're going to take an example and look at this sort of tiled, angled floor, which has got sort of grout and dirt in between. So now I'm in the texture generator, you can choose how many images you want to be generated and you can set a prompt. And these prompts in this one is mainly keywords. So in this case, I might want to search black tiles. Once I've generated it, I've seen that it doesn't seem to do very good with just black tiles I just want black tiles specifically so let's do a different color and say blue tiles in this case now it does okay on the blue tiles I guess but there's still some white in between I just wanted solid blue and then I tried to search in that I didn't want any white tiles and it does a slightly better job you can actually add an input image to be able to select what type of pattern if you're using a generic pattern so maybe I wanted some tiles similar to this pattern here and then we can generate again solid blue tiles with no white tiles. Again, it gets slightly closer to what I want. Now, if I just type in white ceramic tiles, I do get something that I wanted with an even color across the board. So I don't like how there's so much differentiation between it. Maybe I just don't know how to use a negative prompt. If anybody does have a good suggestion in the comments, I'm happy to hear. So let's say, for instance, that I like these white tiles here. So we can press to edit so we can have a little look at the tiles and you can create edits to regenerate your options. You can right click and you can upscale the image to make it a 2K resolution set of textures. Then you can actually save this if you want it to save as one of your favorites. Or you can actually view as PBR which will create a PBR set of textures to be able to use. And this does use shader graph. You can do adjustments to this with it. So now with that being said, we can double click and we can have a look around and Unity have said that they're going to be adjusting the actual viewer with the lighting because I think the lighting at the minute looks terrible and it's hard to tell. So we can actually adjust the preview to adjust what the tiling will look like. If there's offset rotation, we can set the height amount, which I probably don't want, wouldn't want the height to be that much. And metallic probably would just set that to zero because I don't want it to be metallic at all. I want it to be a little bit rough because I wanted the them to look a little bit shinier. So let's say that we're happy with this. We can go back to the generation and I can go to export and I'll just export this as white ceramic tiles, but we can add the white grout here. So if I select the material, you can see all the maps that have been produced. You, we can adjust the tiling. Maybe I want that 30 by 30 as an example. The height intensity, you can mess around with that. You can adjust the metallic, but it doesn't need it for this type of material. I wanted a shiny surface. Then if I give this a little play in my scene, you can see the new tiles that I've produced for this floor. Again, you can see when it's there's a bit of darkness and there's light on it, I can see the reflective surfaces. Now, I don't really like how the grout in between here has the same roughness value as the rest. It would be something that I don't know if it can be even taken into account when we do the AI, but it would have to be authored separately on the maps because I don't think that's very suitable. So what do you think of the texturing AI so far? And do you think it could be usable? And if you do like this video, do give a thumbs up because it really helps out. So if we go back to the generation and we'll try and say wooden floorboards as an example and let's see what it can produce there if we wanted an entirely different selection. I still have that pattern on so it would look a little bit weird so I will take that off and regenerate and you can see here a few selections of floorboards which I suppose could work. So we'll try it, we'll upscale this these floorboards here then I'll view it as PBR. Now I'll add the wooden boards to my floor here and you can see that they're ginormous we can adjust the tiling. Now, when I've adjusted the tiling, it, it just about works. I mean, I don't really like how it tiles. That's what I was worried about with the AI. Would it tile nicely? And it is mostly a fully rough material, other than maybe if we varnished our wood slightly, so we can have a little bit of roughness on there. But then we could press play. And I'd say at first glance, if you put other assets over the top, like these leaves and things, you could possibly get away with it looking suitable for this scene because it's fairly similar to what the original texture was. So say I apply the material all the way down this area, 
although it does seem in comparison between the two, the highlights on the material do seem pretty blown out. So now I'm up at the top of this scene where there's some lounges and maybe some blankets and other stuff. I wanted to see if we could create more of a fabric based material. So maybe in this case, I want to create a green towel fabric as something that you could use over multiple surfaces. So I mean, these are kind of what I expected. I'll probably go for something a little bit more subtle. So here I'll upscale this image. I'll view as PBR on this asset to create the textures. I would say it would be nice for when you export a material for it to give a good naming convention rather than just a bunch of letters and numbers and things like that. But I suppose renaming that isn't so bad. So I'm going to select this material so you can see that it's a towel sunbed material, which it currently uses. I'm going to apply the green towel fabric, as you can see there, looks awful. So I'm going to really reduce the height because I don't want too much. But we're going to need much more tiling on this. So if I put it 20 by 20, and now you can see with the green towel fabric with the roughness to one, because it's not going to be a reflective surface, neither is it going to be metallic. I think it looks suitable as a material inside the preview, especially when we don't have lighting on it, but it may need a rebake to get the sort of pure detail out of it. Now I wanted to give an example of doing it on this pillow or this cushion, because this will be custom UV mapped, so it's a little bit harder than just a tileable wall or something else. So we'll give it a try. So I've just typed in the stripy fabric cushion. I got these generations, so maybe I wanted something just minimal. I messed around with a few generations and I think these ones are a little bit crazy, but we'll just go with it and we'll and we'll upscale the orange cushion here. So I've applied the stripy cushion material to the cushion and maybe a little bit of tiling. I like how we can set the rotation just so that we can get a different variation that we might like. I don't want really any high intensity very much there. I don't I want a metallic object. I want it to be fully rough. So you can see my new textured cushion on here. And I mean, from a distance, I suppose it could be serviceable. You probably wouldn't notice. And even if you zoomed in, it probably wouldn't jump out at you and think, well, that definitely doesn't suit the whole environment. I think it could work. So I've applied a few different textures up here, including this new ceramic tile floor that I got from the generation with a sort of shiny surface so we can see the reflections. We've got the new fabrics for the cushions and the floor, and we've got the wooden surfaces we can use. So I think in a practical application sense, you could quite easily use the AI. It'll be much better at doing generic tileable surfaces like brick, like tiles, like wood, like fabrics and things like that. Something that requires specifically UV'd and very refined materials. I don't know how far it will actually go. And do let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see me use the AI to test anything else out. If you want to use see any other use cases, I'd be interested to do that too. But I wanted to give you a general overview on how you can use it and how you can generate your materials to use it for the better. Do be sure to check out my Patreon to get over 200 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Do be sure to check out all the links in the description for all the best sales, savings and everything you can find in game dev. Do come and check out my website to get bonus discounts and a free asset when you spend over $10 on all my great assets because there's massive discounts compared to the Unity store. And a big thank you to all my patrons, including Peter Steiner and everybody else who comes to watch the channel. So thank you and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.